Power distribution and solar monitoring are being moved off the container wall in the kitchen. This is to make way for a doorway. I've removed the power board and now I've got a nice clean wall again. I've put the 12 volt charge controller on the left hand wall. This is because we still need to be able to monitor all the batteries. This is one of my original charge controllers. These two go to the solar panel. These two go to the battery. This is 12 volts to the wet and dry containers for lighting and phone charging. I really like the Outback charge controller and inverter. They've been a really wise investment. So this blue line controls and monitors the inverter and this blue line monitors the charge controller. This is the cable harness I made for the charge controller and the inverter. There's two outlets, one for the charge controller and one for the inverter. And on the back there's simple push fit connections that go through some Cat5 cable. And at the other end we've got some RJ45 connectors. These go to the charge controller and inverter respectively. And this is the solar controller. It's called a mate. Basically lets you monitor and control what's going on in the solar system. You simply plug in an RJ45 and when it's connected it powers up. In this case it's firing up the charge controller. And if you press status and then charge controller and then meter it shows you what it's doing. We've got 23.4 volts coming in and 50.7 volts in the batteries. The mate fits onto its own holder and the plate fits onto a standard wall mounting. Simple really. The connectors will join on a simple junction box on the outside wall. This keeps the containers portable and easy to disconnect. So let's test the cables. Plug it into the inverter and it powers up. That's perfect. And now the charge controller and that powers up. It's found the charge controller status, charge controller, meter, and there's about 84 volts coming off the panels. That's all the monitoring working. Excellent. I've added a power socket and so now I need to test the system. I've got a simple plug-in device that'll test the socket. A red and a green mean it works. Excellent. I'm very happy with this and I think it's a great improvement. I've now removed all the extension leads that I was using as temporary wiring. Everything's been replaced with proper cable. This is the mains feed for the dry container and everything's in conduit. This is the conduit taking power to the television. So after all the moving, here's what the power box looks like inside. And here it is with the door shut. I removed the old power board in one piece. Further down the track I'm going to be able to install this into the white container and make a spare room. If I don't count a couple of twiddly bits, the wiring for the containers is now complete. I can put my wire strippers away and carry on with the kitchen. Thanks for watching and I'll see you for the next instalment of the adventure. This topic is covered in full detail in part 2 of the ebook How to Build an Off Grid Shipping Container House. Press subscribe to follow more of our adventures and please press the like button if you enjoyed this video, it helps the channel. For more information about the ebooks, please visit my website at buildshippingcontainerhouse.com.